So yesterday saw the release of the actual CCTV footage of Nicola Bully leaving her house on the day of her disappearance. This was released kindly by Grizzly True Crime, link to her channel in the video description box below if you wish to check that out. And already we have a lot more questions regarding the CCTV footage. Why is there no frost on the floor? This was a very cold morning, there's no frost on the bins, no frost on the grass and no frost on the concrete below their feet. How can we explain this? Now this video is not going to go into the intricacies of the CCTV footage and speculate and talk about what it may or may not show. This is simply to, I guess, try and defuse the situation regarding one of the most commonly discussed topics. I mean, people are never going to be happy 100%, are they? They've seen this footage, they've looked at it in some detail, and already we have further questions which apparently need to be answered. A lot of people are also referring to drone footage. Now this was taken and put on the Mirror YouTube channel, the Daily Mirror newspaper, their YouTube channel. And I've even seen some channels mention, well, you know, this was just a couple of days after Nicola Bully's disappearance. There's frost on the floor here. Why is there no frost in the CCTV footage? So I'm gonna correct that firstly. This footage was actually taken on February the 6th, not a couple of days after her disappearance, but well over a week later. So let's just get this straight once and for all. The footage that you see in front of you was taken on February the 6th. It was uploaded on February the 7th. And you can see here the change in the weather conditions. On January the 27th, yes, it's quite cold. I wouldn't class it as bitterly cold, to be perfectly honest. But on February the 6th, it's certainly a lot cooler, a lot colder. Hence the reason you have the formation of that frost in those drone shots. Now, on the face of things, I can understand why people may see this CCTV footage and immediately jump to the conclusion, well, maybe this was taken on a different day. I remember that day being very cold, bitterly cold in fact. There was frost where I lived, there was frost nearby. Why is there no frost on this CCTV footage? But frost is actually a little bit more complicated than one would imagine. It's actually quite interesting that this topic has come up when it has because I've taken a look at another case which is called the Essex Boys Murders and one of the biggest sticking points in that case is the fact that you had a Range Rover which was parked down an isolated farm track in freezing sub-zero conditions, way colder than what was seen on January the 27th of this year. Yet this vehicle remained in the same location for the best part of around 12 hours, maybe more, and yet when it was discovered the following morning, it had no snow, no frost, and no ice on it. Now, at the end of this video, I will include a piece which appeared in yesterday's Essex Boys video concerning the formation of frost, snow and ice. Now, some people may say, well, you know, maybe you're going into a bit too much detail here. Well, the way I look at it is that if you're going to come up with speculation, if you're going to throw ideas out there and immediately look at this CCTV and question it and say, well, hang on a minute, there's no, there's no frost. This was taken on a different day. This must be wrong. Then you probably should take the time to look a little bit deeper into how these conditions actually occur and see if it would be feasible for that frost to be present on the morning of Nicola's disappearance. So as I say, I will include that towards the end of this video. But a few things that stand out to me when looking at the weather conditions is that you had some intermittent cloud cover which could hamper the formation of frost and also the temperatures don't appear to be incredibly low as many have reported. Yes, they are cold. Um, they do seem to fluctuate between site and site here. We've got some temperatures which are above freezing and one site which appears to be zero or minus one. But also worthy of consideration and what will be covered at the end of the video is the location of where these bins are. They're right next to the neighbor's house. You've also got this paving which isn't particularly conducive to frost formation. So all of these aspects are going to be covered towards the end of the video, as I say, with a scientific piece which I covered in yesterday's video regarding the Essex Boys murders. Now, I can imagine a lot of people at home are asking the question, well, what are your thoughts on the CCTV? Do you believe this is Nicola in the CCTV? What do you believe personally is taking place here? Is there anything untoward happening here? But for me, 
And you know, in my videos, I'm always completely honest. I don't tend to follow what other people say. I just do my own thing. Like a lot of creators say, actually, you know, they do their own thing. They follow their own news. They create their own content based on what goes through their own minds. And that's basically how I create my content. I don't tend to just jump on any idea because it's popular or other people are talking about it unless it makes sense to me personally. And for me, the speculation regarding who took the children to school and what took place during that morning, for me, the speculation stopped when the police came out and said, Nicola drove her two children to school that morning. For me, it became incredibly difficult to look past this fact because we're talking about children who are aged six and nine. We're not talking about children who are a lot younger, maybe two and three or two and four years old, and maybe they could have got it wrong. I mean, clearly, at some point in time, these children are going to be asked, well, who took you to school that morning? And they're going to say, well, my mum did, or mummy did, or whatever. And that's going to be Nicola. So I find it hard, very, very difficult, to get over that particular hurdle. Very, very difficult. One of the biggest issues that I face personally, and this isn't against any YouTube creators or anything like that, this is just people in general, to be perfectly honest. And I have, I've experienced this in the case that I focused on, you know, the Essex Boys case that I focused on for many years before branching out into other cases. But one of the biggest issues that I face personally, and probably many people face, is that if you have an idea which doesn't buy into someone else's idea of what took place or their speculation or their theory, then things can become incredibly toxic. It becomes about, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me. I'm the one who's right here. You're working for someone else. You're buying into someone else's narrative. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, that's how it comes across. Very, very forceful. And I hope with the content that I've created, you know, over the past few years, that I don't try and convince anybody of anything. I try and look at the facts. I give some of my own opinions on what may or may not be taking place. But I'm not here to drill anything into anybody's mind. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. And regarding, I guess, going back to the main point of this video here, the CCTV footage, um, as I say, I find it incredibly difficult to get over that hurdle of the police coming out and saying that Nicola drove her two children to school on that morning because to me that kind of throws a massive spanner in the works of any other suggestions you could say okay well maybe Nicola did drive them to school but then she came back and something else happened to her during that time period and then they quickly got together the CCTV footage and something else happened and then Nicola was you know you can go on and on can't you but to me to actually make content and to you know really get into a potential theory it has to make sense to me. And I try and start from the beginning with when I, you know, when I look at ideas or certain circumstances of what may or may not have happened, I try and go back right to the beginning and look at how possible it is, how plausible it is, and what obstacles lay in the face of any potential theories. Now, before we continue on with today's video regarding the CCTV and the lack of frost in that particular location, I just want to say that what I've stated there is by no means in any way, shape or form meant to be some kind of slight or negativity towards any other creator on YouTube. That's not what I do. It's not who I am. It's not what I'm known for. It's literally my own thought process and how I create my own content. Things have to make sense to me personally for me to you know, buy into certain theories. That's basically all I'm saying there. Back to the topic of Frosto, as we conclude today's video. I don't believe people are aware of how cold it was on January the 27th. I think people are looking back here, they're seeing the drone footage, they're looking at this footage on YouTube and thinking, God, yeah, it was freezing cold. I mean, this footage was taken just a couple of days after her disappearance, or even on the same day. I've even had some people say, this drone footage was from the same day she disappeared, which is completely and utterly untrue. This footage appeared well over a week later. February the 6th was a hell of a lot colder than January the 26th and January the 27th. So I don't think it was as cold as people remember it back on January the 27th. Also remember that during the night of January the 26th into the morning of January the 27th, there was actually intermittent cloud cover, which does stop or hamper the formation 
of frost, which we're going to find out about just in a little moment here. Also, the location of those bins, close to the neighbor's property. They may also have items inside them, which you'll explain could also play a factor. I know this all sounds very scientific, but we're going to get into this in a bit more detail just in a little bit here. But a lot of people are saying, well, why is there no frost on the bins? There's no frost on the paving here. There's no frost anywhere. What the hell is going on? So hopefully the next video should explain why there is no frost on the morning of January the 27th. And also finally, just bear in mind the temperatures again here. On one website, it actually mentions it not going below freezing, which is important. One website mentions zero to minus one. But again here on the drone shots that have been shown so widely during this investigation of these fields and the frost formation, this took place well over a week later. These drone shots were on the Daily Mirror YouTube site and they were actually recorded back on February the 6th. So what I'm about to play for you now is a little bit more scientific concerning a case that I looked into or have been looking into for the past few years, which is titled The Essex Boys Murders. And one of the, as I say, biggest sticking points in this case is the fact that this Range Rover that you're going to see in front of you, by all accounts, arrived at this lane at around half past six, maybe slightly later in the evening of December the 6th, 1995, and was not discovered until 8am the following day. Now, a lot of people say, well, surely this Range Rover turned up here after midnight. Surely that Range Rover wasn't there for very long. It has no frost. It has no snow. It has no ice on it. So this video is going to give you an explanation as to why there is a lack of frost, snow and ice on this particular vehicle. And also how all of these certain situations actually occur. So let's take a look at frost. Basically, frost has the potential to form on blades of grass, glass and metal surfaces as they do not hold their heat very well. They are the first to cool quickly below the dew point which creates condensation and subsequently into frost if the air temperature is cool enough. The process to create frost requires that the object's radiating heat energy is transmitted outwards and into space. This is why this effect happens mainly, almost exclusively, on nights where the sky is clear as there is nothing to trap or reflect the heat radiation back to the object. Now this theory is evident if you leave two similar vehicles outside in the open where the ambient temperature is minus 5C, but one of the vehicles is left under a tree or under a carport. The outside temperature is the same, but the level of radiated heat away from the object is different. If you've ever seen a large tree in a park when it's frosty, you'll notice that from around the drip line of the tree to its center, there will be no frost. This is because both the tree and the ground are exchanging heat radiation with themselves and stopping the condensed water vapor from freezing. To try and explain this situation regarding the Range Rover, I will bring in a few more variables into the equation that might offer a valid reason to substantiate the theory. Now, as described previous, there was a light frost that evening. Where the Range Rover was found, it was cushioned either side by a lot of vegetation and a large tree that would have the effect of suppressing the frost in the way I described earlier. There is every chance a light frost may have formed at some point, but equally it could have changed very quickly. It is clear that the Range Rover was facing due east and across a large area of unbroken line of sight to the rising sun. We know the temperature got up pretty quickly in the morning from the melting snow, but any frost that was directly exposed to the sun's radiation would clear almost immediately although you would expect there to be some mist on the outside of the windscreen before it cleared completely. We only have the word of Theobald and Jiggins, and they were looking into the side windows, and I'm sure they were preoccupied with what they saw to describe in exact detail how the front screen looked. From what they said, they retreated to the road and called the police. The sun rose at 7.51 on the morning of the 7th of December 1995, and we know that they arrived at around 8am. It would be interesting to get the exact time that they made the call to understand what time they actually got there. The sun would quickly hit the Range Rover and it must have already been light when they got to it. In summary then, the first two points I believe are fairly easily explained, although some would probably disagree. The third point however regarding the frost is a lot more difficult to work out, but does tie into the other points. 
We can verify that there was the possibility of frost, but equally there is enough circumstantial evidence to suggest that other factors are at play here. Point number one, the dead bodies expelling heat enough to mitigate the frost in combination with the other factors. Number two, the surrounding vegetation and microclimate of that particular area reflecting and containing radiated heat between itself and the Range Rover. Number three, the sun rising in direct line of sight to the Range Rover at 7.51 a.m. And number four, a very light frost may be not affecting that part of the lane. To understand this fully, you need to detach the snow on the ground and the ice puddles from your thinking, as although they may give the impression of relevance, they are not directly related to the frost. They are, however, indicative to the ambient temperature of the area and the speed at which the area started to fall. Okay, so just to summarise this video in particular, I feel like I've gone on some kind of science experiment just to kind of verify this CCTV here. It seems a little bit ridiculous, but... It is what it is, as they say. But anyway, as reported in that clip that you've just watched there, almost exclusively, you need a clear night sky in order for frost to form. And we know that on the late evening of January the 26th into the morning of January the 27th, there was intermittent cloud cover. So that on its own could mitigate the formation of the frost. Also bear in mind the variation in the temperatures reported across various websites. Some websites report the temperature not even getting to zero or below, whereas one, rep one website reports temperatures of zero to minus one, then rising up to six degrees. So with all of that in mind, and also a point that I failed to mention, the location of the bins there, the fact that they are close to that neighbor's property, they may have items inside which are exchanging heat radiation, we just don't know. We don't know if those bins were empty. There are plenty of factors here which could tell us that actually there shouldn't be any frost during the morning of January the 27th. I don't believe that there's enough here, evidentially speaking, to suggest, hang on a minute, we're looking at a video that's been recorded on a different date. To me, with everything that we've discussed in this video, along with the, the drone footage, which has been widely reported to be somehow linked to this morning of January the 27th, when clearly it isn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the day in which Nicola Bully disappeared. I think hopefully this should clear up the situation regarding the lack of frost seen on the CCTV footage. Anyway, if you have found this video helpful or interesting, please do give the video a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.